Fontana Lake is a gorgeous mountain lake in western North Carolina situated directly between the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and the Nantahala National Forest. The lake was created and is owned by the Tennessee Valley Authority and covers over 10,000 acres at full pool. Its 239 miles of shoreline are home to over 90% protected, forested land. It's considered a hidden gem in many ways, but for those who know about it, it's best known for its jaw-dropping, scenic beauty. These days, it can be difficult to find a lake not fully lined with multi-million dollar homes and development, but on any old day out on Fontana, you can expect to see clear water reflecting beautiful, undeveloped mountains as far as the eye can see. It's a nature lover's paradise and a bucket list destination for many who crave natural beauty and solitude. However, things are not always as they seem. There is a dark side to this lake, so to speak, that the pictures on the internet rarely show. When you look a little closer, hidden right in plain sight, this supposedly pristine lake has a very dirty little secret. Unbelievable how many flip flops I have found in 30 feet. Bottles and tennis balls. Oh man, it's just so sad. It's just really sad that, first of all, that people dump trash and drop trash in this beautiful, pristine lake and beautiful setting, but it's also sad that we have to get volunteers and spend all this money picking it up. One of the most beautiful lakes you find anywhere. Unfortunately, though, the lake's been plagued with a long history of litter styrofoam and debris from a number of things. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. While it's downright disappointing that an event like this has to happen in the first place, thankfully six years ago, Fontana Marina manager Brandon Jones decided he couldn't continue seeing all this trash and feeling all the frustration without actually doing something about it. Alongside just 11 volunteers, he kicked off the very first lakeshore cleanup, and five years later, hundreds of volunteers are gathered here this weekend to carry on that very same legacy and continue tackling this incomprehensibly massive issue. Uh, this year was wild. We had two locations this year instead of one. More than double the volunteers showed up. Sad we got to the other end of the lake this year and started down there and it was like day one again. It was like starting back five, six years ago. What Brandon is referring to is the difference between cleaning up areas that have been cleaned in the past versus areas full of what we call historic trash. The coves that have never been picked up during this cleanup before are full of 50 plus years of backlog trash and may take 20 volunteers an entire day in one single cove to clean versus covering dozens of miles of shoreline in half a day in the areas without historic trash. So this year, by expanding the cleanup to the opposite end of this roughly 30 mile long lake, we were able to focus more on coves with historic trash that were just too far of a boat ride away from the original cleanup home base at Fontana Marina. The Fontana Lake Estates residential community was kind enough to offer up their facilities, heavy machinery, and dozens of volunteers to tackle this uncharted cleanup territory. Here's the first year we've also operated from this end of the lake here at the Fontana Lake Estates boat ramp um, in addition to Fontana Village Marina. So hopefully we're going to get twice as much trash out of the lake this year. Be very mindful of basically slip, trips, and falls. I mean, you're going to be hobbling and crawling over all these like down debris, trees. That's the biggest like safety issue that we, we always run into. So people that come to volunteer, they think they're going out to put trash on boats, bring it back and all that, and we kind of work it different. We send the groups out to the locations and they work all the trash from the banks down about 15 feet from the water line. And we've got companies, National Park Service, Keep Tennessee River Beautiful Association, they come in in their boats that specifically haul trash, flip all of it on it, and then they go to the next cove so you can 
run it more efficient. It's like a uh, assembly line out there, so it makes us just pile the trash in in three days. First year of the oh. cleanup, right? Yeah, what's your first impression? I can't but... believe this. This is this is criminal. I can't believe how much trash there is. It's yeah. really horrible. It's, it's just insane. awful. But it's nice to see everybody pitching in to help it. And styrofoam's really heavy. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was light. It's really heavy. Everybody's always asking what the big white blocks are. They're styrofoam, and it's not like styrofoam cups. These things are two, three, four hundred pounds. Five grown men can't pick them up sometimes. That styrofoam is what used to float these floating houses, and a lot of them still have it. And they have till 2030, 2031 to get rid of it and put the new encapsulated under them. And it's just piled up over the years. It's amazing to me that 80% of this is that styrofoam. We went through 500 bags in the first day of trash bags of trash. So don't get me wrong, it ain't all styrofoam, but the styrofoam takes up a lot of room. Both the size and weight of the styrofoam is one of our biggest logistical issues with this cleanup. Not only do we need a mind-boggling number of dumpsters to fit all this, but getting it to the dumpsters in the first place is also a challenge. Suffice it to say, without heavy equipment and barge-style boats fit for hauling heavy loads, a cleanup on this scale just wouldn't be possible. We have our friends at the National Park Service and the Keep Tennessee River Beautiful Association to thank for their help with the styrofoam in particular. I'm Kathleen Gibby with Keep the Tennessee River Beautiful. We've got the trash boat crew been going and collecting all of the piles on Montana Lake um, that has been cleaned all weekend because of a cleanup put on by Brandon Jones and um, it's Sarah here. <laughs> this weekend we've um, taken in just full trash boats just with our boats. Seven and a half full trash boats. So that's a lot for us. Kathleen does cleanups basically for a living. How many do you do per year? We do uh, between 40 and 50 a year. Um, and we go across the whole seven state Tennessee River watershed. Um, the way that it compares differently, like a lot of times it's just us putting on a cleanup. So in this case, we were coming and assisting. So this is a, a strategic collaboration across the whole lake. And uh, we're just really impressed at how many people came out and, um, and the organizers of the cleanup for just making such a difference. Well, thanks, Kathleen. We appreciate you and we appreciate your your boat here, that's made a huge difference having both of the Keep Tennessee River Beautiful boats here to help us haul off the trash. So grateful to be here. Awesome. Grateful to you guys. Thanks, Sarah. Another exciting collaboration that we had this year was the addition of a diving crew at the marina recovering underwater litter. For this cleanup, it takes a particularly experienced diver, acquainted with the use of lift bags, diving in limited to zero visibility, as well as altitude diving, since we are up here in the mountains. This awesome and selfless crew dives at cleanups all over the country and prefers to be anonymous, so we'll just call them our angel divers. They recovered nearly a thousand pounds of sunken debris off the lake bed in less than two days. One of my favorite things about this cleanup is seeing all the different types of people that come together and use their experiences and strong suits to benefit this community. In fact, I think that's the number one silver lining about the global issue of litter in general. Everyone. No matter how old, no matter the tax bracket or political beliefs, no matter the geographical location or line of work, everyone can be a part of the solution. If I can come and do this like this, <laughs> I don't know why anybody can't. 
volunteer and I'm just three months out from a triple bypass and 30 years we've had a houseboat but I'm from Rockettsville so so many houseboat owners that don't even bother coming out I don't understand that why would you not try to do something I mean you use it makes a big difference when I'm out fishing and not see all that trash. This is a great opportunity to give back. It's a great opportunity to do something good for your community and for nature and for our, our world. It's a great feeling. It feels great to feel like you're doing something positive. It's always good to be around the group of people that are willing to come out and give of themselves and their time. It's kind of a positive vibe. It's fun, actually. I enjoy it. Cleanups like these, albeit sad that they even have to exist, they do bring people of all walks of life together for a common goal. And I have to say, this cleanup in particular is far more challenging than most. And yet, ask any volunteer and they'll tell you, it is a dang good time. When the lake comes back up, when all the fish are bedding in those coves that we cleaned out, they now got new coves and their kids ain't swimming around in microplastics. I'm thinking we got anywhere from 75 to 90,000 pounds, but we'll know in about a week or so whenever the totals come in. The dumps can't even take that much at a time around here. They can only do a little each day. There's some expense involved in putting this on. We, the roll-off boxes, we're using 30 cubic yard roll-off boxes. Uh, they have to be transported, they have to be taken, dumped, etc., etc. So if you're interested in this, it occurs the first weekend of November every year. We can use more help. If you're interested in it and unable to participate physically, we, we can use your financial support. As of now, we've always paid for dumpsters, and I mean, the big 30 yards are $1,000 a dumpster, so we're spending eight to $15,000 an event just on dumpsters. The dumpsters have always been the limiting factor of this cleanup. For the second year in a row, we've actually ran out of dumpsters. We had to tell everybody on Sunday, on the last day, not to pick up any new trash, which is kind of heartbreaking because we didn't have room for what we already had from the previous two days. So we just staged it all here on the ground and um, are gonna have to figure it out, you know, over the course of the next few weeks. Surely being the largest national park trash cleanup on the history, we could figure out how to get companies to help donate the dumpsters as tax write-offs. So you know everybody needs tax write-offs. Amen. Got to give a quick thanks to a few individuals who were instrumental in this year's cleanup. Almond Boat Park, another marina on this lake, came out and helped and brought a boat this year. They're uh, real happy to get involved with us next year, make it bigger. Each little group that fed everybody, all the desserts from the ladies, woo, made me want to go back out there hustle a little bit more. Donis and Larry Toms are a staple in this event. Donis is our resident morale booster. She bakes so many cakes and dishes. Larry has been operating the backhoe. Adam Monroe from the National Park who does all the volunteer work, help get it organized and get some helpers. Cynthia Womble who has been kind of instrumental in helping spearhead efforts on the other end of the lake. A mission like this takes a village to accomplish, and we're so grateful for all the different roles so many folks play in making this possible. We have a long way to go, and we will need a lot of help. But for those watching from afar, keep in mind that even if you can't volunteer or donate to this event, there are no doubt ways you can make a difference in your own neck of the woods. Just a reminder, you know, you can make an impact by making sure trash doesn't blow out of your truck, picking up little pieces here and there. Every single state has some kind of adopt a highway, adopt a mile program. Just think there's 330 million people in this country. If they picked up two pieces of trash a day, we yes. wouldn't need big cleanups if everybody just kind of got a little bit more conscience and aware.
Jones reporting. Over and out.